In this video, I'm going to talk about radio buttons, hopefully, and hopefully you'll understand them. So, what is a radio button? So, you know when you're on a website and you see like uh, a list of items, right? And next to the list of uh, next to every single item is like a a circle that you can click on the inside of. And when you click on the inside of a circle, it puts a black dot in it, right? And you can only have the black dot can only be in one of these several circles and it's essentially used to select one of several options and then you can usually click a button and it'll do something with those options whether it'll store them or whatever whatever thing it'll do something with those options if that hasn't made sense to you don't worry i'll just make the buttons and it'll make the explanation will make sense after the fact so got our window made here um we're just going to make a label and we're basically going to try and pick a name. So we're going to put the label into the window. I'm going to say that text is equal to pick a name. And we're just going to put it onto the grid, dot grid. Row is equal to zero. Column is equal to zero. And we're not going to change the columns. We're just going to keep adding row numbers. And we're going to make two radio buttons. So here's the radio button declaration. We add a window, not a winod, a window. We add text and we're gonna we're gonna add a name to the text. So we're gonna say that the first name is John. And then we're gonna add a couple more things that you haven't seen yet. So we're gonna add a variable and also a value. I'm gonna say the value is equal to one. Now this value here can be a string or it can be a uh, integer, right? A variable is something special within radio buttons and within Tekinta. So I'll get back into that in a minute. I'll have to change this and assign it value, but I'm, for now, I'll just make the buttons. These won't render, by the way, without the variable value. I'm just making them so I can get the creation out of the way. So we're going to make these two buttons, and we're going to put them on top of each other underneath this. Label text is equal to Daniel, we'll say. So now we've got two names, two options, essentially. Put an exclamation mark like the other one variable without about without a variable sign we're going to say value is equal to two i'm going to add it to the grid at row two column zero let's just look at that and we're going to add a button and we're going to hope that this button uh, will allow us to change or pick a name right i'm going to say the text is equal to set name and we're not going to give it a command just yet. We'll give it a command later. I'm just going to show, you know, the basics of how these things work. Okay. I'm going to say column is equal to zero. So basically, let's go over the variable then. Tekinter uh, objects or some Tekinter objects can actually be associated with a variable, right? In Tink Tekinter. Now, you obviously know what a variable is in Python. If you're not you really need to figure it out because it's pretty basic. But a variable in Tekinta is essentially the same as a variable in Python. Um, but it's a little bit different as well. So a variable in Tekinta is used to track basically certain items. And the value of it changes according to the value of whatever item it's on. So I'll make a variable first off. And we're going to make a variable. We're just going to call it var. And we're going to say it's equal to int var, okay? And int var is a tekinter integer. There's also str var, so I'm just going to, I'm not going to use an str var, sorry, string var. And that is actually a tekinter string, right? Now then, why have we called var an int var? Well, we're going to use this var as our variable for both of these uh, radio buttons. And essentially what happens is this variable is always an integer. And every time you choose a button, it's valued. So the value of var becomes equal to this value. So whatever value the radio button uh, actually assigns it. So if I would click on this radio button, var will suddenly become equal to the value here of radio button so var will be equal to one but then if i click on the daniel radio button 
the value of var, i.e. the variable that we've selected and associated with this radio button, will now be equal to 2. And Tekinta needs its own variables to essentially ch track these changes. Okay. Now, I'm going to render all of this, or load it all up. We'll just see what we created. If you didn't understand what var radio buttons are, you probably will now. Okay, so you can see, as I was saying, you get you know, a list of items and next to them you get like a little circle. You click in the circle to choose an option and you know, you'll click on a button or you'll do something with this option and something else will happen depending on the service you're using, right? Here, we're going to try and set the name. I'm going to pick a name and set a name. But this button does absolutely nothing. So we haven't set any name at all. We haven't, haven't done anything, unfortunately. But we have made the radio button, so we can change these. And you have to keep in mind, every time I click on one of these variables, uh, one of these radio buttons, the value of variable changes because it becomes equal to the value uh, of the radio button it's the variables associated with. So here we got Daniel, and now var is now equal to 2 because the value is equal to 2 and the variable associated with this radio button with the text Daniel is var that we specified there. You might want to rewind this and uh, just listen to what I said a couple times. It don't make sense. Okay. So, yeah, we've got our variable and we've got the value of the variable. It changes every time we change from variable to variable. Okay. Now then, we want to add functionality to this. We don't just want to, you know, essentially change these radio buttons and click and do nothing. We actually want to click and get some kind of result from our click, right? So, let's define a little function that will change or do something when we click. What we want to make is we want to make a label underneath this button here. That's what I want to do. So, we're going to go and click select and we're actually going to make a variable. We're going to call it text. We're just going to make it a string. okay? And we're also going to print var.get. Now, I better explain var.get. So, var.get or any Tekinta variable dot get will get the value, the current value of that variable. And you've got to remember when you change uh, from one radio button to another, the value of var will change according to the value of the radio button that's been selected, right? So, if I were to click on this radio button and use var.get, I should expect to get the value of one back. And then if I were to click on Daniel, I would expect to get a value of 2 back, okay? If I were to click on those and use var.get, right? Now, we're going to say that if var.get equals equals 1, that's if the value of the variable is equal to 1, which it will only be if we click on this radio button, because it's the only one with the value of 1, so that would be John. Then we want to do something, and what we're going to do is we're going to change the text to be equal to John was selected. Okay? And we're going to make a label that represents this, and we're going to say window. So we're going to put it in our window. We're going to say that text is equal to text. So we're going to say that the text parameter or attribute of the label is equal to this text variable. Okay? And we're going to add it to our grid. And we're going to have to add it to row 4, which is just below this button here, column 0. And then it should appear below there. We also want to actually get this value here. And we want to do something when it's equal to 2, i.e. when we've selected Daniel, when var is equal to value 2, and text is Daniel. And we want to make we want to make the text variable equal to Daniel was selected, and we're going to make a label again of window. We're going to say text is equal to text, and we're going to put it on the same part of the grid as before. Okay. And what will happen here is. When you change and then you click this button, hopefully, oh, we better put it as a command. We'll put this as a command later. 
what should happen if variable is equal to one, if var dot get is equal to one, is this label will be created at row four. Then if it's equal to two, that old label will be removed and the new label will be replaced at the same uh, row level, so at the same place essentially. And now in order for us to use this click select, we actually have to add it as a command here of our button. I'm going to say click select. Remember we don't use these parentheses, we don't need them. I'll add one though because I deleted them all there. And what should happen here is when I click select, essentially it'll create a label depending on who I've selected. We'll also get a printout to see what variable we're on. Okay. Let's have a look. So we're on John at the moment. So we're hoping that if I click set name, that the text that will appear below should be John was selected. We'll get a printout of one because we're going to print variable.get. And we got that and we got John was selected. Does Daniel work? Yes, Daniel also works. And we got a printout of two. Okay, and I can keep setting the name and we'll keep getting printouts of two because Daniel's variable value is equal to two. So when we get variable, we'll get this value of two. And the same for John. We get the value of one because the value is one. Okay. Looks like that's been understood. Now, I'm just going to show you something here when I start this up. You might be wondering how you can change it. You might notice that nothing is selected. And on a lot of websites, they select by default uh, one of these options for you. It's, you know, just as a default option, right? So you might want to do that. You might want this to load with a default option selected rather than forcing the user to select something, right? So if I set name here, I'm just going to get zero back. And, you know, because zero hasn't been uh, assigned here, nothing happens underneath, right? So we might want a default value. So we pick Daniel, John or Daniel is automatically picked. And if we can't be bothered picking a name, it just sets the name for us, right? So copy paste this. And it's actually very, very easy to uh, set a name or set a variable in such a way. So simple, in fact, that all we do is put variable dot set for our variable and we set it to whatever value we like. So I'm going to set it to value one, i.e. John, and you'll see that John should be automatically selected when we run this main loop. You can see that John has been selected automatically. OK, now you're probably thinking, well, that's really cool. I can now set names however I like. And that's great and all, but what if I want to set a name and set something else? Let's say I want to set a pizza topping, okay? I want to pick a pizza topping and set pizza topping, right? Underneath here. Well, I'm going to need a whole new set of radio buttons. And I'm also going to have to separate their functionality from the functionality of the other radio buttons, okay? So I'm going to copy and paste this. Just one more time. Oops, just one, two, three, four underneath there. So you're going to get a lot of code if you're looking at this in uh, GitHub. So I'm just going to check. Well, actually, I don't need to check anything. I'm going to copy and paste all of this, all of this now underneath itself. And I'm going to make just a few changes. So the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to get rid of all of this, essentially. I'm going to make a string variable instead of an integer variable um, because I want to use strings as the values, right? And we'll change the set later on. But first of all, we need to change these labels. Now, the first thing we need to change about this label is not its row, but we actually need to change its text. And we want to pick a pizza topping. So we say pick a topping. And then we want to change the row value. Now, if you remember here, this is our last item, this label created, and it's at row four. So whatever we want to place underneath, it must start at the row beneath it. So we're going to put this at row five. Now, radio button text, we don't really want it to be John, do we? Um, we actually want it to be a pizza topping. So let's say anchovy. I think I've spelled that right. Now, our variable is now equal to var. Now, we can't use var because... We're already using var here, 
and we want the variable that we're using for this radio button and this these two radio buttons to be different to the variable used to this we want this to be independent of the one above it so we're going to rename these variables here var2 we're going to name it var2 here var2 here var2 here var2 here quite simple okay it's all been renamed we're also using string variables we're not using uh we're not using integer values, so we have to change this value to be a string, and we want it to be the same value. We want it to be anchovy, right? We want the value to be equal to the text, okay? And we need this grid value to change as well, so we need it to change to six, row value to change to six. We want to change this to another topping, so we've got anchovy, mm, I don't know, let's say, Pineapple. I hope I spelled that right. I can't remember how to spell pineapple if I'm honest with you. Now we're now using this variable two instead of variable one, so that's all fine for the first variable. The value, however, we want to be a string because we're actually using a string var. And if we set var two to be an integer, something's going to go wrong or it's just not going to work the way we intended. And we want this to be equal to uh, that text value. Okay. Don't need that there. We want the row value to be one above this one because we want it to be below that one. And we also want the row value here to be eight. All right. So here we've got click select. Might want to rename this because that's already using click select and we want this to do something different to that above it. So we're going to use click select two. This variable two dot set, well, we don't want to set it to one um, because there isn't a value of one. Okay. And we can't set it to anything in that case. We actually have to set it to one of these two strings because they are only values available for variable two. So we probably want to set it to anchovy or pineapple. I'll just set it to anchovy here. Now, we actually want this click select to do something different. It's fine. We need this text and we need to change the text. We want to get var2.get. I want to change that to if var2.get as well. And um, we want to print var2.get. We want to see this value, the printed value here, rather than var1's printed value. We need to change the text because we're not selecting a person. Uh, we're now actually selecting anchovies or whatever, right? But we also need to change this get. We don't want it to be equal to 1. It'll never be equal to 1. It'll only be equal to anchovy or pineapple. So we're going to change this to anchovy. And we're going to change this to anchovy was selected. We need to change this row to row 9. Because we want it to be below the button. And here we want to change var2.get to not be equal to 2. We're asking it if it's equal to pineapple. Because we aren't using uh, the above these values. We don't want to look at these values. We want to look at these two values. So it has to be equal to one of these two values. So we're setting this one to be equal to pineapple. We're just going to put pineapple or selected. And we want this row once again to be row 9, not row 4. Let's try that. It might not work, or maybe it will. You know, here's hoping. There's probably going to be some error that I haven't seen here, but, you know, I can try. So you can see now that we've got our uh, our two separated uh, sets of radio buttons you can see that we've set um, var to uh, one and the value the the sorry the radio button that uses variable var that has a value of one is this one which is john so it's set to john so that's all fine nothing's changed there and then down here we set var2, which is used in these two radio buttons, to be equal to anchovy. And the only radio button with the variable that uses variable var2 that has the value anchovy is this first one with the text of anchovy. So this is correct. It's all been set to the correct thing. Now, I'm going to change the name to Daniel just to make sure that Daniel works. And we should get a printout of value 2 because we're going to get var uh, we're going to get the value of var and print it, and we should see, uh, you know, Daniel has been selected as our text as well that will appear when we make a label. So 
it's open and it says Daniel was selected and we've got two printed out so that's fine we're going to test pineapple here just to make sure that it comes out saying pineapple was selected in a label below the set name button here and we should get the pineapple uh, text here printed out so let's see what happens pineapple was selected and we've got the pineapple text we'll try anchovy and we see it says anchovy was selected we get anchovy bit of a graphical glitch there but Nothing to really worry about as long as it's working. And we'll just check that John also works. And John also works. So let's go over everything one more time because we've got it all working. You're probably understanding the concepts, but you're scratching your head a little bit, right? So here we've made a radio button and we've made a label and we've made a button, right? Each radio button. It's associated with a variable. It's actually it's a Kinter variable and not a Python variable. Okay, we've decided that these two variable, these two radio buttons, uh, their variable is equal to var, which is here, and we set that as an integer variable or a Tkinter integer variable. Okay, every time we select one of these two radio buttons, the value of var changes to be the value that we've set for the radio button. Okay, so as we select the text Daniel the var the var value will be equal to 2 if we select John it'll be equal to 1 okay quite simple there now when we click the button this command click select will uh, be triggered by the clicking of the button if variable dot get is equal to 1 or its value is equal to 1 then we're going to make a window that says that John was a label that says that John was selected underneath this button so essentially if this is clicked then this label will be created and if Daniel was clicked then this label will be created below the button okay and the way that we can determine which was clicked was by the get values because whatever value we get will relate to whatever we've clicked on here because the value will be the same as the value of the radio button here we've done a ex pretty much exactly the same thing all we've done really is we've decided to use a string variable and we've called it variable 2 instead of var and so these two radio buttons are using the variable var2 as their variables and they're actually strings okay so the values are strings instead of integers as defined by string var and as put in the values here okay we've also set values but we won't get into that we put these all in different places of the grid so they appear below um, all of these various different widgets, uh, buttons, labels, whatever. And essentially, we've put set this command to be click select 2 and we change this uh, function to be click select 2, right? And we're just going to get variable 2 and if variable 2 is equal to anchovy, i.e this radio button has been clicked then this label will be created that says anchovy was selected and if var2.get is equal to pineapple i.e this radio button that uses var2 and has value of pineapple has been selected then this label will be made that says that pineapple was selected so i'll show you that one more time wow this is a big bit of code big bit of code and there we are and you can see they've set the values as well so here we are nothing big nothing special yeah that's about it so i hope you enjoy that tutorial and i hope it made sense to you goodbye